Welcome everyone to uh, another NCON Webinar Wednesday. Today we are graced with the presence of Ron Miller, Lamar Jackson, and Jimmy Segura. We got the A team from Dorking for us today. Yes. Uh, they are going to help us walk through how to use your meter and some simple wiring and uh, a few other little things. Uh, we will be giving away two multimeters during this presentation. Do one about halfway through and one at the end. So I'll let Ron run with that whenever he feels like taking a break and saying, hey, let's do a giveaway. And uh, you must be online to win. Um, with that said, we're going to go ahead and get this thing started. Uh, okay. Mr. Miller, you're on, sir. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Ron Miller. I'm the manager of training and tech support at Dora King. And with me today is Jimmy Segura from our tech and seminar department and Lamar Jackson. And we just want to spend a little time and talk about working with meters and test equipment. You know, everybody has a meter in their truck, hopefully. But do you know how to use all the functions and where you can use it to best benefit you when you're on the job site? So that's kind of what we want to go through today. Um, as we work through the program today, if you use your question and answer button to submit questions, um, we'll be monitoring throughout and feel free to ask a question at any time. We want to make sure you get the information that you're looking for. So when you're looking at test meters, there's lots of different types of meters that you can get into, all right? Having and knowing how to use your testing equipment is critical when you're doing installations, trying to track down a wiring problem when you're, when you're a service technician. These are very valuable tools, all right? That means having the right meter for the job you're doing, being familiar with having, how to use the meter, and you know that manual that you threw away when you unboxed your meter, that can give you a lot of really good information on your meter. Remember, test meters are a very important tool in your bag. A meter that's not working doesn't do you any good. So make sure you check your meter, have, have spare batteries, because batteries do go down in it. And when you get a weak battery, you can start getting some intermittent reads on it. You know, I like to recommend have two different types of leads on your meter. The probes that you um, just have pointy probes, if you will, and clip-on leads, because sometimes I need to clip on the lead to measure, take measurements over an extended period of time. And remember, meters have fuses. One of my uh, favorite sayings a guy told me a long time ago is fuses blow for a reason. If you blow a fuse in your meter, don't just replace the fuse and test it again. Make sure you understand why that fuse blew. Remember, before we get to meters, use good troubleshooting technique. Follow a, a plan when you're approaching a problem. You know, one of my techs always says, ready, fire, aim, as having a plan that's out of sequence. All right, make sure you're, you're following a plan. You know, use your ears, listen to what the problem is. What's the owner telling you that the system is doing or not doing? Listen to the equipment and is it running smoothly and evenly throughout its travel? Use your eyes, look over the system, all the system. Look for bare wires or cut wires. Look for, for stranded wires that might be shortened out against each other, you know. Look for the equipment, Is are things moving smoothly? Are there LED indicators? Are the LEDs on, are they off? Should they be on, should they be off? You know, make sure you understand what you're seeing out there with your equipment. And then using your hands, you know, use your ears, use your eyes, use your hands, pick the right meter for the job. Maintain safe electrical practices, which we'll talk about a little bit later and turn off power when needed. Some tests with your meter need the power turned off. Make sure you understand which tests those are, which things you need the, the meter turned off on and which things you need the meter turned on for. Let's talk about multimeters first. Multimeters, and there's a lot of different types out there. They all have different ways they use the symbol, symbols and icons on their selection switches. But a multimeter does what the name implies. It does multiple things. 
It tests AC and DC voltage. You can check continuity. You can measure resistance, which nowadays with 10K being a form of monitoring and gate operators can be an important thing to check out. You know, a lot of times they can measure capacitors and diagnose a bad motor capacitor. And they can measure current draw, which helps for DC and solar applications. We'll go through all these different measurements and how to check different things. So first of all, you got to get to know the meter that you have. And every meter is a little bit different on how it works. There's going to be a selector switch or dial in here that you can set the meter up to test various different functions. All right. You may have a, a yellow button or some colored button that allows you to, uh, to toggle between different functions. So there might be some different buttons. And then there's going to be different places you can place your test leads down in the bottom. If we look at the selector switch, some of the common things you check would be um, this symbol right here, which is a capacitor. That's how to test a motor capacitor. On position two here that we see, this tests various things. There's a continuity test with a tone. There's an ohm test and there's a diode checker. So whenever you see a, a meter that has multiple points here, the select button will toggle between these so you can select which one you're testing when your switch is in this position. Then you have this position, this position here, which is voltage, and this particular meter tests AC and DC voltage at the same selection. You may have temperature testing on your meter. You may be able to draw a uh, test current draw in either amps or milliamps. So different meters have different selection functions. There's also a place where you plug in your test leads. You want to make sure for most of your functions, you're using the common for the black and then the red test lead. If you look at all the symbols here, volts, ohms, continuity, temperature, resistance, capacitor, all those functions go here. The only thing these other leads are used for are testing amperage. These are very dangerous positions. If you plug over here in amperage, there is a direct short between your black and red lead because you want to pass the voltage through there and we'll show you how to do that when we get to our amperage section. However, if I'm measuring voltage or ohms or resistance or anything else, this is a dead short. I like to tell a story here. We have a, I'm involved with the gate operator installer school that the AFA puts on. And we have an electrical class where we use these electrical training boards. Some of you may have been through this class before. So at one point, we're measuring voltage across a fuse to see if we have voltage going through the fuse. So there was a person that put his voltmeter across the fuse and blew the fuse. So he put it across there again and blew the fuse. He replaced the fuse, put it across again and blew the fuse. He went through about 12 fuses in less than a minute and a half. Because he had the test leads in the wrong position, he was shorting out the power and blowing the fuse. Um, I'd like to say I won't tell you who it is, but I will because maybe you'll talk to him. He was a door king guy named Hector. And if you ever talk to Hector, you can say, hey, you're the guy that blew all those fuses, right? If that was a gate operator, that would have been a bad situation. So make sure you use the correct test leads when you're checking voltage and resistance. Okay, don't let the smoke out. Now, when you're testing voltage, some meters have a separate setting for AC and DC volts. DC voltage is a straight line with a dotted line below it, and AC voltage is a squiggly line. Some meters have the same switch position and then you push the selection button to choose between AC or DC. Some meters will automatically select between AC and DC. So it depends on what you're trying to do. AC voltage has no polarity, so it does not really matter if you switch the red and the black leads, okay? Some meters have a range button. 
what the range button does is it moves the decimal point. Am I measuring, you know, 16 to 24 volts? Am I measuring 115 volts? I can move where that decimal point is. And on your meter, it should have an indicator that says voltage AC that I'm testing. When you want to measure voltage for a gate operator, find where the AC power, the main supply voltage is coming into the machine. And there might be a couple different places you can test this. On door king operators, we have a terminal strip that you can test it right where the AC wires connect. You can also check it on many operators on the circuit board where the black and the white wire come into the circuit board. Different machines have different ways of connecting power. So understand where that power is coming in. One of the key things to measure is voltage drop. Whenever you're troubleshooting, especially if there's intermittent problems, voltage drop is an important thing to test. What that tells you is what the peak load is on the operator, all right? Sometimes you have long wire runs, there's undersized wire being provided to the operator. You might have a situation where there's multiple pieces of equipment on the same circuit and they're drawing too much power. Uh, I've seen situations where when the street lights come on, the whole voltage in that panel drops down and that can cause intermittent issues. The only way to test voltage drop is if I have a voltmeter with a min max button. If I just look at the display, you'll see the voltage change. Maybe it's at, you know, 117 volts and it drops down to 113. But I don't see that peak load that hits for a split second. That's what I need to capture is that peak maximum draw of power. So what you would do is you would clamp on your your test leads and i prefer the clamp on here if you use just the, the the probe leads here the problem is if your lead pops off the terminal when the gate's running then my minimum voltage is zero so it's harder to test a clamp on lead is better then what you do is you run the gate a few cycles and you push the minimum maximum button, it's going to show you the highest voltage that you recorded and the lowest voltage that you recorded. You're looking for less than a 10% drop in voltage, ideally about a 5% drop. I have a little video here that shows how to measure voltage drop. So let's watch this video real quick. I'm going to demonstrate how to properly check for voltage drop. First, make sure you have a proper meter, something with a min-max setting. Set the meter to AC voltage. Find your incoming power. I'm going to get it here from the main harness, the black, hot leg, and the white neutral. Note the incoming power at standing. Then I'm going to set the meter to minimum, and I'm going to run the operator. Note the voltage drop. So that's a significant drop in voltage there. We went from 117 to 108. That's, that's a little over 9%. That's bad, all right? you should really see about a 5% drop. If I see, if I'm close to 10%, you have a problem there. Um, you can also check voltage on phone systems. Same thing, you clip on your test meter. What I do is I call somebody, have that person dial nine, because at that point, all the circuitry in the phone is active. The gate operator kicks on and I'm usually getting power from my gate operator. So I have a peak load on the supply voltage. What's 10% of 16 volts? You know, 1.6 volts. So if I'm dropping down to 14 volts, I have a problem there. Now, I'm sure you've been to jobs, right, where they ran cap five wire for the power supply and they, they doubled up the conductors, but it's just not enough. If I have voltage drop 
that can cause a lot of intermittent problems in your gate system, in your access system. Hidden things where just sometimes the gate doesn't work. You know, sometimes it stops mid-travel and other times it's working well and it's hard to track down that problem. Another thing you might think about, these voltmeters test for voltage drop and they cost, you know, you can get a good meter for 80, 90, 100 bucks, somewhere in there with that has good voltage drop test. But you can also buy a meter, <clears throat> excuse me, that records voltage over extended periods. A regular voltmeter after five or 10 minutes, it's gonna power down to save battery life. But you can buy a meter, it's more like two or $300. You could set it up on a machine and let it run overnight or all day and then come back and it keeps a log of the voltage and you can see if at certain times a day the voltage is dropping. It might be good for your company to have one of those available um, for testing those sites where you're having random problems that are hard to track down. Do we have any questions so far that have come up? No, no questions. Okay. When you're testing DC voltage, it might be a different switch setting on your voltmeter, or it might be the same setting and you toggle it with the selection switch. On DC voltage, there is a polarity. So if you get a negative number on your voltmeter, if you get in a reading like minus 24 volts, your black and, and red leads are, are switched. Just switch where you're measuring the voltage from. So again, typically your meter will say DC voltage. You may have a range button that allows you to test, is it five volts, is it tens or hundreds of volts? DC voltage testing, you can do the same thing. You find where the power is coming in on DC operators. DC voltage is the red and black wire. So you're either gonna have a 12 or a 24 volt machine. On access systems, card readers and um, radio controls, weekend devices work on DC voltage. You can measure the, the power there. If you need to check for millivolts, which is micro voltage, often there's a different switch for that. And it changes where, you know, what level of voltage I'm measuring. Another common test is continuity, all right? And um, hey, you know what, Jeff? This might be a good place to give away a meter that has min-max setting. Hello. Sorry, I was on mute. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. How do you do that? Do I need to stop sharing or? No, no, we're good. We're golden. Um, I have, we've, we've taken everyone who who is, currently online with us right now and threw all the names in a hat here and so we are going to go with our first winner is Sergio Milanes from Capital Automatic Gates. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Congrats Sergio, we'll, uh, we'll get this in the UPS to you right away. Okay. Let's, uh, let's talk about testing continuity. This is, continuity is basically, do I have a connection from point A to point B? It's a great way to test wiring. Uh, am I getting a signal from the, to the control board from my access device? Is my photo beam, is my loop detector, is my gate edge giving me a signal? Am I getting continuity? To test continuity, the best way to do it is to put it in tone mode. That's this thing here that looks like, how many bars do I have on my cell phone? All right, you wanna put it in tone mode. If I touch the two leads together, you'll hear a tone. So take your test leads and touch them together and it should beep at you. Power must be off to check continuity. I never wanna check continuity with power applied. So turn off power on the gate operator, for example, and then put your leads on the common and the open command, then I could you know, punch my keypad in and see if I'm getting a tone. 
You can check fuses this way, for example. If I have a good fuse, you'll get a tone going through the fuse. If I have a bad fuse, you won't get a tone. If I'm checking the relay on something, so if I go between common and normally closed, you would get a tone. When you activate the relay, it would break that tone. If I go between common and normally open, you would not get a tone. When I activate the keypad or hit the radio or the card reader and the relay energizes, then I do get the tone. So it's just a way of checking wiring and uh, to make sure I'm getting good circuit from common to the open command or to the reverse command or anything like that, to the door lock. Testing resistance, you know, some people use this to test resistance in motors to see if I have a good motor or a bad motor. Nowadays, another place that you test resistance is on your 10K devices, which are monitored photo beams or gate edges, all right? Again, power must be off to test resistance. You're just looking for a dry contact. Okay. So for example, if I had a photo beam, we're looking for 10K resistance on the photo beam. What that means is if I measure between the output relay of the photo beam, you should get 10,000 ohms. When I put my hand in front of the photo beam, that shorts out, it should drop to zero. So if you're hooking up a, a photo beam or a gate edge, a lot of photo beams have settings in them. Are they a 10K beam? Are they a power up and change relay status? Are they a pulsing heartbeat to work with other operators? You know, if your gate is not working, one of the things you might want to do is, do I have the right connection for that 10K? Maybe I'm hooked up to the wrong point inside the photo beam. So this is a way to test where I hook up to my gate operator that's using 10K. Another good test is capacitor testing. If I have a gate operator that's struggling to start, it seems weak, it can't get the gate moving, that is an indicator that the capacitor might be bad. Capacitors give a boost to the motor to help start the gate up. And there's capacitors in AC machines. A lot of DC machines also have capacitors in their circuit. The capacitor test is this unit right here. This is uh, the symbol to test capacitors. If your voltmeter doesn't have this, buy a new voltmeter. Again, power must be off to test a capacitor. You need to take the capacitor out of the motor circuit. Capacitors store voltage. Be very careful. Don't touch the leads of the capacitor, the terminals on there. You will get shocked. Even a capacitor that's been bouncing around in your truck for six months can still have a charge in it. So the first thing you want to do is discharge the capacitor. So when you unplug it from the motor leads, put a screwdriver across it to discharge it. Then you set your meter in capacitor function and you put your test leads on the meter. Some meters take a few seconds to charge up the capacitor, and then you'll get a reading on that meter. The reading should match the value on the label of the capacitor. So this is a 50 uh, microfarad capacitor. You should get a reading plus or minus 6%. So anything from about 47 to 53 would be a good capacitor. And guess what? I got another video for you to watch on that. Let me pull this up for you. Welcome back to Door King Tech Tips. Today we will be looking at how to check a motor capacitor. For our test today, you're gonna to need three things. First, a capacitor for testing. Second, a meter with the MFD capacitor symbol, third a screwdriver or insulated wire. Please note capacitors are dangerous. The job of a capacitor is to store high voltage to start the motor running. 
The capacitor we will be checking today is rated for 370 volts AC. The first thing to do when checking a capacitor is to discharge the capacitor by taking your screwdriver and shorting out the terminals or your insulated wire and shorting out the terminals. Now that the capacitor is discharged, go ahead and connect your meter to the capacitor with one lead to each post and set your meter to the microfarad capacitor setting. You should get a reading. Our reading is 52 UF. Now that we have the reading on the capacitor, go ahead and check the side of the capacitor for the UF microfarad rating. This capacitor has a value of 50 UF plus or minus 6% which indicates anything between 47 UF and 53 UF would be a good capacitor. So our capacitor is good. Congratulations on testing your first motor capacitor and we'll see you next time for more Door King Tech Tips. Seems pretty simple, right? Do we have any questions uh, so far, Mr. Jimmy? Yes. How can you test your meter? I don't think mine is working right. Well, um, there's a couple ways. If you put it in tone, where you have the, uh, the speaker, you can touch your leads together. It should, uh, it should beep at you, all right? If you put it in ohm, when you touch your leads together, you should get zero ohms. You could put it, uh, you can measure voltage, put it in voltage, uh, hook it up to a battery, right? A 12 volt battery or any battery, if you know the voltage of the battery, a flashlight battery, and you could measure the voltage. And it should be close to that. I mean, batteries, there's a plus or minus, but you can tell if you're measuring voltage on that. Um, if you think it's not working right, check the batteries in your meter. And there's often a fuse in the meter. See if, the f if it's not working at all, uh, you can replace the fuse in the meter. If, you're, if you don't have faith in your meter, buy a new meter, right? A good meter you can get for under 100 bucks. And it, it, you, have to have, you have to know that you're getting good readings when you're testing stuff. We have another question. Yes, sir. How long do you have to short the capacitor? Is it just a quick short? Yeah, just a quick, just go right across the terminals. You're not going to see a spark or anything, but as soon as you touch those two together, it discharges the capacitor. The capacitor holds high voltage, but it's very short duration, so it'll just discharge that. That's it. Okay. When you're testing current draw, this is where I move my leads over to amps or milliamps, okay? And what this is used for, for DC operators, for solar machines, we often get asked, how long will the gate run when power goes out? A lot of that depends upon how much current you're drawing through, you know, from all your accessories. So it's important to know how much current your accessories draw. How much is your loop detector drawing? How much is your keypad, your radio control, your photo beams, things like that. When you're measuring current draw, you may not know, am I drawing amps? Like a motor might draw 10, 11 amps of power or a radio control that draws 30 milliamps of power, all right? I might not know which one I'm, I'm drawing. Typically, Larger devices such as gate operators, motors, heaters draw amps, and accessories draw milliamps. A milliamp is 0 0.001 amps. So keypads, receivers, photo beams draw milliamps. The problem here is your meter is fused. So the milliamp is fused at 400 milliamps. If I draw a half an amp, it's going to blow the fuse. The amp terminal is at a 10 amp fuse. If you're not sure of how much current 
your drawing, start with the amperage setting. Your meter might show 0 0.003 amps, but at least I don't blow the fuse if I guess wrong. Does that make sense? So when in doubt, start with the amp rating. I can always move it over if I need a, a better reading. AC voltage has no polarity, so the test lead doesn't make a difference. And the way you measure current draw is you place the leads, the meter, between your power and your device. All right? So you have your common leg plugged into the meter. You have your red lead plugged into amps or milliamps. You select AC or DC. Make sure you're connected to the right one. And then you take one leg of your power, say for a keypad, you run that through your meter on its way to here. So the power is actually passing through the meter. That's how we grab how much current is being drawn. That's not that hard to do with low voltage devices like keypads or radio controls. And you can, he you can measure how much power is being drawn in standby when it's just sitting there and how much power is being drawn when you activate the keypad. So when I punch in a code and the relay activates, it's gonna draw more power. Same thing with any of your devices. However, if I'm measuring high voltage like a gate operator, it's not as easy to pass the power through the meter. It's a little more dangerous because you're dealing with 115 volts. There's another type of amp meter you can get. It's a clamp-on meter. This is way easier for testing current draw. Instead of disconnecting this wire and running it through my meter, I just take the hot leg and clamp the meter around the hot leg. And then it measures the current draw. Very simple. I highly recommend you have one of these in your uh, truck stock. There are cl uh, clamp on amp meters now that also do multimeter functions so they can test voltage and current draw. And some of them even test capacitors like uh, the video showed. So this might be a good investment for you. When you're measuring current draw, again, you just clamp around the hot wire coming into your machine and you can see how much current that draws. And you wanna know the current in standby and in when it's running. Now, this is really the same thing a current sensor does. You know, a lot of operators have a inherent reverse sensitivity. That has a current sensor where there's a motor wires running through this little donut. So it's just an amp meter. It's measuring how much current's being drawn. When the motor hits an obstruction, it tries to draw more power to push through there. Kind of like when you step on a gas on your car to go uphill. So that's what the operator control board's looking at. If I see a spike in power, it reverses the gate. When you're measuring low voltage devices like keypads and you're trying to calculate for solar operators or for DC operators, look for solar friendly devices. For example, there's some keypads like our Door King keypad and our Door King radio controls. If you put them in regular mode, they're drawing 10, 20, 30 milliamps. In low power mode, in solar mode, they draw one milliamp or 0.1 milliamp. It's a lot less current draw when they're just sitting there in standby. So when you're working with DC machines and solar machines, look for keypads and radios and loop detectors that have a, a, a low current option, solar friendly option. Any questions on current draw? No, no questions are, are in yet. Okay. Um, if we're testing loops, all right, a regular voltmeter, I can test continuity so I can tell if I have a broken wire in the loop, but that's not the problem with loops. The problem with loops is when you get a breakdown of the wire insulation. The, the insulation around the wire gets cracked or, or damaged, 
or the, the, if it's the wrong wire, it gets saturated with moisture, and then I have leakage or shorting to ground. That's what you want to check with loops. And to do that, I need a megger. A regular voltmeter or multimeter can measure maybe 10 mega ohms. We need something that can measure 1,000 mega ohms, 500 or 1,000 mega ohms. This actually puts 500 volts through the loop wire to test the insulation. All right, and that's what you're doing. Make sure you disconnect the loop wire from your detector before you test it. You don't want 500 volts going into your detector. So what I would do is I'd pull the loop wire off. I would clip one leg of my test meter to the loop wire, the copper of the loop wire, and the other leg to a good earth ground. I, I prefer an earth ground near the loop. Some people use the case ground of the gate operator. However, that might just be tied into your electrical green wire, which is grounded back at the electrical panel a couple hundred feet away. I know some dealers, they keep a metal rod in their truck and they'll drive a metal rod in the ground next to the, the roadway so it's close to the loop and that's a good ground to test that loop wire. When you connect it, you push the test button and you want to see the test would come up into the green area here, up above 100 mega ohms resistance. If I'm in the amber or red area, I have a bad wire, you need to replace that loop wire. It's a black and white test, pass or fail. And guess what? I got one more, actually a couple more videos to watch here. Uh, let's see, let's watch this one first. Okay, we're gonna test the loop today. First thing we did is disconnect power. Then we remove the wires from the loop card. We'll connect one lead of the mega meter to case ground. The second lead connects to one leg of the loop wire. Then we'll just push the test button on the mega meter. So that's a very bad loop. That's, that went straight to, to ground. Now, I know I said use the, the, don't use the case ground. This particular operator has a ground rod right next to it. And the case ground is tied to that ground rod. If that's the case, then certainly you can use that case ground. But I need to make sure I have a good ground near the loop. Hey, this will, yes, sir. So on the, along those lines, a um, question came in. How close does the earth ground need to be to the loop? You know, if you're in the area of the gate, there's not a specific, um, you know, 10, 15, 20 feet. I just don't want to use the electrical ground that's a couple hundred feet away. It needs, I, I need to be able to get the electricity to ground. Um, I have another video here that shows testing of a good loop. Notice it took a little while to get up to that good. Some of that has to do with how far away the ground is. So sometimes you gotta leave that button pushed for a little while to get a good reading. Okay, testing loop wire, you're checking for a breakdown of the insulation. If you're in the yellow caution area, replace the wire. That means you have some leakage to ground. If you were to check it on a rainy day, it's probably gonna be a dead short. So go ahead and replace that wire. You can also use a megger to test motors. What you wanna test is to see if the motor windings are shorted to ground or to the case. So you take one test lead of your meter and hook it up say to the red motor run wire and the other lead hook it up to the case of the motor, the housing, and see if you have a short there. Make sure you turn off power and disconnect from your motor circuit. 
I don't want to induce 500 volts into anything in my operator. So make sure you've separated that motor. Okay, questions on that? When using the Megger to test the short on the motor, if there is a short, then we'll see a bad reading or a good reading? Correct, you'll see a bad reading. You should be up in the green. If, you, if you're down in the yellow or red, that means I'm getting leakage to ground. All right. Um, you know, another test on the motor is not with the Megger, but with uh, your regular continuity tester, you can check between the motor open and motor close windings and see if I'm a short between those windings. Okay, electrical safety. You know, when you're working with electricity, you wanna be safe. Whenever possible, turn off power when you're working on circuits. There's a power switch in your gate operator but when I turn this switch off, is there still power inside the machine? Yes. I have many a scars on my arms from my elbow bumping against the terminals on a 9150 and my arm yanks out and scrapes across the metal. Know where the power disconnect is and turn that off. When you turn off the power disconnect, tag it. Put some type of tag on it so somebody doesn't walk by and go, oh, the power's turned off, let me turn it back on while you're working on the equipment. Use well-maintained tools. If you have a bad electrical cord, don't just wrap some electrical tape around it, get a new cord, all right? Use your proper personal protective equipment. Gloves, safety glasses, earplugs, hard hat. When you're working around moving equipment, watch for loose clothing. Everybody wears their flannel shirts untucked. You get that caught up in something, that can be a bad situation. Practice good wiring safety. Just like your car, when you're jumping your car battery, you wanna connect the ground first and then the hot wire. You wanna disconnect the hot wire first and then the ground. If you get in those good practice, good safety measures, you know, I always say turn off power, but sometimes you end up disconnecting things when power's on, low voltage things, things like that. Make sure the ground is always connected before the hot wire is connected. RTFM, read the full manual. Manuals are great things to have. They show you wiring diagrams, where you can find voltage, where to test voltage. If you're not certain, call tech support, but look in your manuals. They're gonna give you a wiring diagram and you can follow this and see where all your 115 volt wiring is. You know, there's wiring here, there's wiring at your power switch, there's wiring at your terminal strip, there's wiring at your gate motor. You can check voltages in all those different places. That's our little training presentation today. Hopefully we gave you some good information. Jeff, time to give away another meter. All right, all right. We pull and again, if you guys minute. have any questions, shoot them out there. I wanna make sure you get your questions answered. Okay, the next winner is Mandy Jones from RNS Erection. Mandy Jones. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, anybody have any questions I can help you with? If not, thank you for attending today. We appreciate uh, this opportunity to work with you and give you some good tips for the field. This is part of our Busted Knuckles program and we do these kind of nuts and bolts field training um, periodically. So, so we'll look forward to working with you in the future on this. A, a huge thank you to all of the guys from Dorking for their time and effort on this. Uh, we really appreciate you. And uh, you know, this was a very good seminar. Everyone should have gotten a, you know, learned something from this. I know I did. And uh, we appreciate you and hope we can do this again really soon. 
Have a great day, everyone. And come see us again on Webinar Wednesdays. Thank you, Thanks, Jeff. Everyone. Thanks for having us. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy your day.